So what if you injure yourself when you're out on a hike and you need to start a fire and you only have one hand? We're gonna try this out today and see what happens. Stick around, it's gonna be a good video. So recently I was talking uh, to my friends over at Nutrient Survival on their podcast, and we got in the discussion of starting a fire um, if you only had one of your limbs, one of your hands working because of an injury. Um, and of course we're talking about, you know, if you only had a ferro rod and your knife, how do you get a fire going? Obviously with a Bic lighter, one hand is no problem, but uh, these scenarios, they do happen, um, and it's also just a good test of your skills to try these different things out to see if you can do it. Um, it's a way of pushing yourself a little bit. Uh, it's uh, Obviously, it's a training tool, um, and you may never use it, but it's always cool to say, yeah, I tried it, and you will learn something from it. So. What I wanted to do today is, since this is something that is kind of fresh in my mind after this discussion, um, I want to try it because I hit something I haven't done. Um, so why not goof around with this, see what happens, um, see if there are any things that I can learn from it, and then hopefully while you guys are watching, you learn something too. So let's get into it. So the scenario is you are out hiking around um, with your gear and for whatever reason, you're on a trail, you're in the backwoods, and you take a tumble, and you know you lose some of your gear, some of your stuff is, is missing, and you've injured yourself. You've potentially broken uh, your arm, and it, it may be your, your dominant hand or dominant arm. Um, and now there is um, eminent threat of not being able to get back to your vehicle. Um, because of your injuries or because of it's getting dark and it's not safe to travel when it's dark. Um, so what do you do? Well, obviously the things that we always talk about when you're out in the woods and you and this, something like this happens is that you want to stay put um, and hopefully someone knows where you're at and eventually they'll come to your rescue. But if this happens, uh, you may have to start a fire and because fire making um, is important. Um, it's gonna help with uh, keeping you warm. If temperatures are dropping and you have minimal gear with you, you may wanna have a fire. Um, it may also help in signaling, getting people to, to your area. Um, and then, it, of course, it is a psychological boost to have that fire. Um, it is a calming effect. It will help you relax and not panic. So, with all that said, how would I get a fire going if all I had was my ferro rod and my knife and I only had one hand to work with? Now, uh, if you're using your dominant hand, it's going to be a little bit easier. But if you're only working with your non-dominant, and that would be my left, things are going to be considerably tougher. Um, so let's try to simulate this and just see what can be done um, with minimal gear, um, what it would be the best method. So the first thing we need to do is we need to simulate the injury. We need to immobilize that hand. This particular piece of gear that I have here, this is a military issue cravat. This is the triangle band bandage. Uh, you'll see them um, in military surplus and OD green, sometimes they're tan. This one happens to be the ACU uh, or the um, digital camo. Uh, it's just what I had. So, but it's what it, this is what it's for. It is for creating um, a sling um, that you can immobilize your arm. A million uses, but this is one of them. And so now, if I can't use this hand or this arm because I've injured myself and I, I don't want to use it, what am I going to do? Well, as 
See, already it's hard not to want to do stuff with it, so I've got to make sure that I'm not using it. So first thing is, my gear, I've got my ferro rod now. I've got my big beefy one, so this is gonna be a little bit easier to use than a smaller one, so I'm gonna put that in my pocket. And then I've got my knife. That's kind of hard to draw out of that Kydex. But I got my Mora Garberg, which is an excellent choice for this. So we've got that. So now what I need to do is I need to um, get some wood um, collected and processed that I could actually start a fire with. So now I'm looking for natural resources that are going to help me get this fire going. And this is interesting. So I've got this nice splintered wood which is already broken up for me. If I can get this off of here with one hand, uh, this is going to be great because I can actually, I think I can do a feather stick with my knife one-handed with this because this is already broken down. It's already fuzzed up. <clears throat> Maybe that's cheating, but I don't think so. Because the, the whole thing about being in the woods and working with this stuff is you got to be able to look for natural resources that are available and take advantage of what you find. Um, this is a fantastic find like this. Okay, one thing I failed miserably at doing, I've talked about this in other videos, and I, it's something I always forget to do, is like I needed to put my gloves on when I was um, processing that wood back there, pulling that stuff off. That would have helped um, because the, the risk of splinter um, is definitely pretty good. So now I just got to get this one of these gloves off. Which one do I need? off my bag here with one hand. It's not easy. Find stuff right here, but what I want to do is I want to try to do some curls and feather sticks because that's what's going to take a spark from a ferro rod. Now I've got this, this material right here which is really awesome because it's already broken down. It's real fine and, and feathery. So I'm gonna put that in my cap so I don't lose it. Okay, see the problem is you gotta get that knife in there good and deep so it is a solid platform. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw My, nut, my uh, piece of wood across the blade to create my curly cues. Get this down a little bit. Of course, that Garberg's got the that exposed tang on the back. <laughs> Actually, doing a pretty good job doing feather sticks instead of just doing curls. So maybe I'm going to miss it. So 
pain in the butt. Now I'm gonna try something different. I'm not getting lots of curls. It's taking a lot of time. That's all I've really produced. But now with this particular knife, the Garberg, it's got a um, sharpened spine. And the sharpened spine is really good for creating really fine dust. This is actually doing a better job than the actual knife blade. A lot easier. So actually longer strokes and then slower more pressure against that spine is producing much finer curls and then what I'm able to do is the handle has it's a little pronounced down here it's a guard for your hand to stop your fingers to stop but what I'm actually able to do is is press the wood up against that so it's kind of a brace and then draw this Luckily, I've got a good size ferro rod. That helps. Get my knife out of there. Now, normally I wouldn't do this on a stump, but certainly does help having that platform so now you can start adding like you normally would sticks I've gotten this broken down material here nice dry stuff and then what you would do is you would be adding bigger and bigger pieces as you go It's a lot harder to feed this fire with one hand. It's a lot slower. I'm just gonna grab material off the ground I'm finding, and then I can start adding bigger wood. So I'm gonna put this out, obviously. We're not gonna let this burn on a stump, but I think it illustrates the point that you definitely have the ability um, with the right tools and some practice that you can probably do this, I think. All right, so did the challenge. Um, I lucked out because I found that splintered down uh, branch that had some really nice broken pieces that were small enough that I could bust them off with one hand really easily. Now, um, if I was out here and I didn't have that, it would definitely be um, an issue. It would be a little bit harder because I would have to break um, you know, thicker branches and then try to cut those down with my knife. But with a good solid blade, um, full tang, sharpened spine, the Scandi grind did really well. Putting that into a stump really gave me a good base to work from and I was able to manipulate that wood and get the real fine stuff, especially with the spine, that did fantastic. And then um, with a, a decent ferro rod, a good size one, um, that was easy to work with with one hand and that stuff took a spark like that. I mean, it was quick. And then once that got 
got going, it was easy to start putting that um, extra material on and getting a fire going. Now, like I said before, I wouldn't recommend doing this on a stump, but if you found a downed log, um, you could use that. <clears throat> you could obviously clear off um, a spot with your knife um, to create a flat spot and then put your knife into it and then of course get your your sparks that way that worked out really well so uh, it was a good experiment um, it's not something I'd want to do every day obviously because it really sucked doing it it was hard my, my hand got fatigued working with one hand but it is possible if you have the right tools um, obviously as a woodsman bushcrafter survivalist whatever you're going to be carrying multiple ways of starting fire matches uh, Bic lighters, um, man-made tinders, a ferro rod, and a good knife. That way you would not be stuck in this situation. But if I was, and this is all I had, these are the only two, two things I had, I could definitely get it done. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I, it was a great experiment. Please check out the Facebook group. It is growing. We're about to hit 5,000 members. Uh, of course, the YouTube channel is growing really well. I appreciate you guys watching the videos. Um, check out the, the website, preparedwanderer.com. Articles, information on there, as well as links to videos and the web store. So we'll see you next time on the Prepared Wanderer. stump but it certainly does help having that platform so now you can start adding like you normally would sticks I've gotten this broken down material here nice dry stuff and then what you would do is